Hello and welcome to Music with Mr. T. In this lesson series, we are going to be looking at a book called Frogs Play Cellos and Other Fun Facts. So, in this series, we're going to use this book to highlight our lessons and talk about not only cellos, but other instruments that can be found in our four instrument families. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Oh, wait. I forgot. Those are solfege hand signs, but I didn't show you the hand signs. Let's look again and sing those syllables together. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Oh, hello. Do you like music? Do you know how to play instruments? How about a didgeridoo? That's an Australian wind instrument. What about the cello? Did you know that the cello is so big and so heavy that cellists have to sit down and play it? How about that cello section of an orchestra is always on stage left? which means it's on the right when you are looking at the stage from the audience. Or did you know that a cello strings are plucked and when they are plucked it vibrates and the air around it moves? The air around it moves produces those sound waves. Okay, okay, maybe you knew those things, but did you know that frogs play cellos? Well, you see, in order to play a cello, you need a bow. No, not like a bow that goes on your head. Yeah, I'm, I'm for real. Not like this kind of bow. This is not the bow you need for yourself to be able to play a cello. No, this is not the right kind of bow, okay? You need a real bow that's made for string instruments. And every bow has what's called a frog. This is the part of the bow that you hold when you play a string instrument. Along with being the handle, the frog clamps the bow hairs at the end. It has a metal piece that you twist to tighten or loosen the strings in order to adjust the sound of the instrument. When talking about the music instrumental families, there are four different families. The first family is the strings, the second, the woodwind, the third, the brass and the fourth, the percussion family. Did you know that orchestras have families? There are four families of musical instruments. The string family, the woodwind family, the brass family, and the percussion family. Because the cello's sound comes from the vibration of its strings, it is considered to be a part of the string family of instruments. Did you know what instrument is in the orchestra that has the most strings? What instrument of the orchestra has the most strings? That's right, the piano. The average piano has about 230 strings, and just like the cello, a pianist needs to sit in order to play it. When a pianist plays a key, a hammer inside the piano lifts and strikes the string. This is what makes the sound. The piano has the largest range of any instrument in the orchestra and is unique because you can play many notes at once. So with all of those strings playing all of those notes, what family do you think the piano is a part of? If you guessed the string family, you'd be right. But the piano is also a member of the percussion family. Why? Because we talked about just a moment ago the hammer inside lifts when the pianist presses a string. So when the hammer is lifted, when the string is pressed, the hammer lifts and then goes back down to hit the string on the piano. When we talk about the percussion family, we're going to find out that the percussion instruments are played in three ways. We can hit them, we can scrape them, and we can shake them. So when that hammer is lifted, it goes up and then comes down to hit the string. Oh my goodness, that was a lot of sounds just coming at ourselves, but what were they? Don't be frightened. Those are just the other percussion instruments. These instruments make their sound by being hit,
being shaken or being banged. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Cymbals are two metal discs that are banged together. Think about any movie you've seen, you see a little monkey with the cymbals. Those are cymbals being pressed together or banged together in the percussion family. Those cymbals are one of the noisiest instruments of the whole orchestra. Modern cymbals are untuned, so they don't play different notes. They play one sound, bang, 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 the entire time, but they sure do add excitement to our music. Have you ever played the xylophone in music class? I hope you have. It is a super fun instrument. But wait a minute. Let's take a look at the way this word is spelled. Xylophone. You'd think it would start with what letter? Z. You'd think it would start with Z because the Z is a Z letter. However, xylophone is one of those interesting words that makes a different sound than the way it's actually spelled. So, let's look at the spelling of xylophone. X-Y-L-O-P-H-O-N-E. Xylophone. It begins with X. If you've ever played the xylophone, you know that you hit the keys with a special type of hammer called a mallet. Using a mallet, you can make different bright notes that sound kind of like bells. We aren't entirely, entirely sure where the xylophone came from, but we think it was developed in Southeast Asia around the year 800, and then it came to Africa. When thinking about playing the xylophone or percussion instrument, we talk a lot about hammers, even with the piano. Now this is a hammer, but this is not the kind of hammer that we're talking about in the world of music. Normally, you think of hammers as, and mallets as construction tools. Yeah, bang, 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 I'm hammering in a nail. No, 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 no. For example, if you're building a top secret superpower treehouse, you probably need this kind of hammer to construct it. But the hammers that we're talking about for our musical instruments look like this, and they look like this. Did you know there are also a lot of other tools and everyday objects used in music? Can you name any of the tools we use in music? How about tools that you might use in your own kitchen? Maybe a spoon? Or a whisk? Well. In folk music from all over the world, we use things like spoons in a variety of different ways for entertainment. In Greek folk music, dancers use beautifully decorated wooden spoons to make a beat for their own dance rhythms. In Russia, the spoons not only make an appearance in folk music, but sometimes in actual orchestras. Also, American folk music uses metal spoons and other objects such as jugs wash, and washboards. When all of these things are played together, they create a very unique type of harmony. Speaking of different cultures, let's talk about Native American music. Drums are a very important part of the Native American culture. These instruments keep the rhythm steady for the singers and the dancers as they perform. But music isn't only fun in Native American community. Often, singers and dancers are telling stories as they perform, as well as passing on customs and history from one generation to the next. Drums are used in all types of music. Musicians use drums in different sizes, materials, and sounds depending on the type of music they are playing. For example, a jazz musician might want a drum that is high-pitched and quiet, whereas a rock musician might want a drum that is low-pitched and loud. Rock and roll was created in America in the 1950s and parts of country music, blues, gospel, and jazz merged together. Besides drums, a rock band typically also had at least one electric guitar, a bass guitar, and a singer. Do you have a favorite rock and roll band? For me, I really like Kiss. One of my favorite songs by them is called Rock and Roll All Night. Ah! 
want to rock and roll all night. Figaro, 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 Figaro. Opera is another type of musical performance, but opera has been around long before rock concerts. It was created during the Renaissance when a group of artists, musicians, and poets got together and figured out a way to make the ancient Greek plays of the past popular again. Opera is a play where all spoken parts are sung. So what does that mean? Instead of them saying, hello, my name is Mr. Tucker, there were no spoken dialogue in opera. Instead, they would sing it like this. Hello, my name is Mr. Tucker. Have you ever heard of Beethoven? No, not the dog from the movie, The Composer. Beethoven the Composer was born in 1770 and he was, and still is, one of the most famous composers ever. A composer is someone who creates or writes music. A composer is someone who writes music. Beethoven only wrote one opera, but he did compose nine symphonies, seven concertos, 17 string quartets, 32 piano sonatas, 10 violin sonatas, 5 cello sonatas, and a sonata for the French horn. Which isn't really French. The clarinet is an orchestra instrument that is often played during operas. What family do you think the clarinet is in? If you said the woodwind family, you are correct, because the clarinet is in the woodwind family. The clarinet is a wooden instrument that makes sound when a musician blows air into it. Even though all woodwinds were originally made of wood, today some of them are made of metal, like the flute. The flute. The flute, for example, is now made of silver, gold, or even platinum. Fancy. Now, wait a minute. I just talked to you all about the clarinet, but I showed you me playing a saxophone very poorly. Well, the clarinet and the saxophone have some really big similarities. Of course, they're a part of the woodwind family. <clears throat> but they're also a part of the wooden family that have single reeds. So that reed is a little piece of wood that goes on the mouthpiece and is tightened down by the ligature that vibrates when air is blown across it, producing the sound that goes through the instrument. The theremin is an electronic instrument that was patented in the 1920s. That was a long time ago. It is used in various kinds of music, but is especially known for being used in the early horror films. Ooh, spooky, spooky. Because of this, it is associated with a very eerie sound. A film score is original music written for a movie. Movies were first shown in theaters in the early 1900s, but there was no sound in them. The films were silent. So imagine... I am your 1900 era silent film. No sound. 
they were usually an in-house pianist or an organist that would play music to accompany the film. Accompanying means that they put the music to them and they helped out the movie to give it an overall soundtrack. The speakers and actors on the screen, silent. So the only soundtrack you got was the pianist in-house playing or the organist in-house playing, the theater organ. But do you want to know something that's really, really funny? Many film scores use advanced digital technology so it sounds like there's live music playing. All the movies that you watch now, even though there's stuff that's pre-recorded in the background as the soundtrack, it is recorded with new technology so it sounds like it's happening right there and right then. If you think about a movie you watch, maybe you see the actors doing a dancing scene. When they actually record the scene, there's no sound for the actors at all. They go back in post-production and add that sound to match up with what the actors are doing in that moment. Speaking of live music, the brass family of instruments can play louder than any other instrument in the orchestra. I'm so sorry if that was a little bit loud. It's okay. We're loud instrument players. I love my trumpet. We play loud. By the way, that word for loud in music, what was it again? Forte. That's right. F-O-R-T-E. Forte. Loud. Anyway, can you think of an instrument in the brass family? Of course you can, because I told you and I showed you what it is. This is a trumpet. It is made out of a golden color metal called brass has three valves that allow me to change the sound when I blow air into the mouthpiece. The tube is also one. It's much larger than this trumpet. But did you know that the trumpet is one of the oldest music instruments in existence? In fact, the first trumpets ever used were made of conch shells. Yes, if you watch SpongeBob SquarePants, you know what a conch shell looks like. The harmonica is an instrument that's much smaller than the trumpet. The harmonica is also pretty easy to play. I wouldn't know. I've never played one. Anyway, you can make lots of different sounds by just inhaling and then exhaling into the side that has evenly spaced channels. To make things even easier than that, you can wear a harmonica on your shoulders. Head, shoulders, head, shoulders, right here on your shoulders. The holder loops around and clamps the harmonica in front of your mouth so that you can play without any hands. Oh, why is this trumpet still here? We're talking about a harmonica now. So sorry. Why would someone want to play the harmonica without using their hands? I don't know. But I bet we might find out in this book. Well, what if their hands are busy playing another instrument, say the accordion? And what if they also had cymbals strapped between their knees? and a drum at their back with the foot pedal connected to the beater. And don't forget tambourines that were tied to their arms. Now that, my friends, is what we call a one-man musician band that plays all of the instruments at one time. Some musicians even use electric drum pads, keyboards, and guitars. One-man bands have existed since the 13th century, and different types of them can still be seen performing all over the world.